This is the Horse Radio Network. Welcome to Adulting with Horses, the podcast for weird horse girls and the best place to be if you can't be at the barn. Put down the muckrake, turn up the volume, and let's have some fun. Hi, everybody. Welcome to episode five of the Adulting with Horses podcast. We have a great episode for you, but unfortunately, I was away and did not have access to my audio equipment. So the sound, while we did edit it to the best of our ability, is slightly muffled on my microphone, and I do apologize. It is 95 degrees at home right now, but I'm sitting in the mountains where it's now 72. Oh, can't relate. So my horses are <laughs> dying while I'm happy. <laughs> That's like my outside versus inside right now. Yeah, right. My horses are melting and I'm like kind of cold inside. I know. Right? It's like the air conditioning is working so great. I almost need a sweatshirt. Meanwhile, you're yeah. <laughs> sweating. I wear cardigans inside all the time. <laughs> I'm wearing a cashmere sweater right now. Oh, my God. <laughs> well, it's a lightweight summer sweater, to be honest. And it has. So here's the here's the thing. I'm at the Vermont Summer Horse Festival. And it's a big, hunt, you know, show jumper hunter uh, in the summer up in Vermont where I live. In anyway, <laughs> there was a couple of shopping t- trailers. And so I had to go in. Yeah. And then I, I'm with four teenagers and they all saw this gorgeous cashmere sweater it's a v-neck and it's like off the shoulder but it's got skulls on it oh my god and every single one of them it said heather this screams you and they only had one in one you know they only had one i said i can't let anybody else have this so i bought it (laughs) i'm now wearing it today (laughs) i have a problem (laughs) it's very cute but it's like a light summer sweater it's like very thin Mm, we don't have that. That's that would be a winter sweater. That's what we would call we call those winter sweaters. <laughs> yeah, for us in the winter, it's like three layers, and soon we'll be able to get down to the base layer, which is the sweater. Because <laughs> I always, I only wear like graphic tees when I ride. <laughs> if it doesn't say something sassy, it needs to be like at least a band T-shirt or something. <laughs> I think I used to, and then I couldn't quite get used to, like, I used to have a lot of band t-shirts, and then I couldn't quite get used to the way they stretched over my boobs, because my boobs got way bigger, and it just was like, no, I'm just going to wear plain things now. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, I just, I've I've given up on the boobs at this point. I just feel like there's nothing that's going to detract, nor make them look like I'm not, like, a whore when I'm wearing a tank top, or, you know, I so I just... (laughs) I was talking to I was talking to these teenagers and we we're talking because I found this great belt and then I started laughing when I purchased the belt because I was like this is going to mean I have to wear breeches so mm-hmm. I could put on the belt and then I said but guys I don't have a torso it's literally tits to hips right. <laughs> <laughs> and then they didn't say no <laughs> <laughs> they didn't they didn't tell you oh no you've got a waist nothing. <gasps> I mean, I guess they were really nice because teenagers didn't want to lie to me. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. I think we've both talked about the weather before and obviously New Jersey and Florida, there's a slight difference, but I hate summer. And I love it. Which is great that you live in Florida then because there's like a lot of summer to be had. Yes. And it's exciting usually. Why is it exciting? Because of the weather, because of the storms. Oh, that's right. They come through every day, right? They are supposed to. Um, Lately, I've just been getting thunder and nothing else. I literally had to water my garden last night, which should not happen in July. Oh, you poor thing. It's really, really <laughs> bumming me out. But there's a chance. Every day there's a chance. So I think I came up to Vermont and I was thinking, oh, it's gonna be so nice. And it is. But then I went 
my favorite thing in the morning when I'm up in Vermont is to go for a walk in the woods with my cup of tea. <laughs> and I forgot that it's full summer here. And so the grass that was mowed two weeks ago is now almost in my shins. And all the bugs are dive bombing me. <laughs> and I, I sprayed on repellent, but I'm getting like actually attacked from all directions. And so I just, they ruined it for me. I can't go walking in the woods because the bugs are mean. Yeah, northeastern, but east coast bugs. It's different on the west coast. Like, I couldn't believe it when I was out west last year. And you could just go outside. You could just go outside. You could go outside and, and not just even, like, a screen. Yeah. Like, they don't even have screens on the window. You just open the window and sometimes a fly comes in. And you're like, oh, bummer, a fly. And that's it. And and th- that was in Colorado. And then we went to uh, we went to Albuquerque and just sat outside and just like lit a fire and just chilled out with people. And you could just do whatever you wanted. There was there were no bugs. Why do not more people live there? I well because uh, there's no water and oh, it's yeah. always on fire. Well, that's probably why there's no bugs. Then they all just get burned up. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I liked, like, we were in Albuquerque, and I thought Albuquerque was awesome, honestly. I thought it was a really cool town, but it's like a, it's like an island, except instead of being surrounded by beautiful water, it's surrounded by rocks and dust for hours in every direction, and I, that just made me nervous. Yeah, I, I love deserts. I really became a fan of it over the years, and find beauty in the very simplicity of it. but. Our United States deserts are terrifying in summer. It's like <laughs> one wrong breath and something's lighting up. Yes. Yeah. So I guess I'll take the humidity in the East Coast. I mean, my hair doesn't love it. And both my horses want to kill me at all times because they hate bugs and sun and heat. Right. But they're little princesses just like me. So it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's really funny because it's a great excuse for me to not ride them. I'm like, my horse is miserable. I don't, I don't need to ride him right now because he's just going to be annoying. Oh, I, that's, yeah, that's one of my number one excuses. Not excuses for not, one of my number one reasons for taking some <laughs> time off is how we're going to phrase that. Is okay. it's, what's the point? Why make things worse for everyone? If it's not going to be fun, why are we doing it? Precisely. Well, and it's funny, I took a video, I got on Delight the other day, and he was the most forward he'd ever been with me. He's usually quite pokey and slow, which is, I know, ironic, because he's an ex-racehorse, but he's, uh, you know, kind of on the slower side, he's lazy. And I had the best trot out of him, but we had to stop and ask someone to bring us out fly spray, and I was carrying it around with me, spraying him every few minutes, because his whole body was shivering. And he was miserable. And I said, this isn't fun. You know, that's one of the things that Florida has um, over like states that feel more horse friendly. You know, when you get up into the Appalachians and the, the, the Ohio Valley, even Kentucky, the flies are absolutely ludicrous up there. Ludicrous. They're huge. Ludicrous. Yeah, they're huge. And you see photos and horses have these enormous flies all over their face. And I'm like, what is going on out there? Whereas here we, we have a variety of biting insects, some of which you can't see, but the, the stable flies are like small and they sting like a bitch, but you can at least, you can conquer them with, um, heavy application of fly spray or, uh, you know, the fly boots actually do work on them because they're really small and you have a shot, you know what I mean? Like, and they don't just swarm the way they do up North. So while yes, we do have a mosquito issue, (laughs) mosquitoes you can also keep mosquitoes off with, with bug spray pretty easily. Yeah. They're pretty good. Yeah. Like they hate it. Mosquitoes are whiny little bitches. They go, Oh no, no, no. And they leave. But flies, they kind of are the brutes. Yeah. Mm. They power I, through and they're like, eh, I don't like it, but I'm going to do it anyway. Yeah, totally. Because you, you, sometimes you spray them and a couple will fall off and one just hangs on. You're like, how? Why are you so special? That no, and I, I actually cocktail talked of to chemicals. One, <laughs> I know. It's like, this is meant to kill you, but you're thriving. You're thriving. 
I talked to this one company and I asked them, I said, well, how many sprays do you think it takes to be effective? And they say less than 43, you might as well not put it on. 43 sprays of a fly spray. What? To actually be effective. 40. Is the number that a company gave me. That is ridiculous. I'm poisoning my horse. I know. That's, that's the thing. I, I don't know if you try a, fly, a, a feed through. I'm thinking about trying like Simplify or something. Yeah, with the garlic. Simplify fly. Yeah. Uh, and I'd love to use fly predators, but I'm just, I'm never sure where to put them. Um, but I, uh, what was I going to say? I was going somewhere with this. I wanted to use Simplify. I haven't, but also, <laughs> oh, natural options. Apple cider vinegar. Things that like layer on the skin over time. I think mm. have some value. So I've started riding pretty regularly. And after, so after I rinse Ben, I give him a rinse with like a cup of apple cider vinegar in water. And then I let it sit on his coat because I have been told over the years and I have absorbed this information that flies don't like apple cider vinegar. And that if you leave it on the coat, it will, you know, sit on the skin and sort of become a long-term deterrent. So I don't know if it's true, but apple cider vinegar is cheap. So it's not hard to do. Well, vinegar in general is considered a great ingredient when you're making your own fly spray. Right. And if you can put enough citronella <laughs> into homemade fly spray, I do think it works. Like the citronella, uh, uh, apple cider vinegar, and ivory soap mix with some skin so soft that's a great blend but it's really expensive to make like all of those it's, things are pricey except for the vinegar yeah. yeah well i don't know i i don't know you probably don't know this but a couple of years ago when i well quite a long time ago now because i was pregnant with the girls <laughs> i couldn't use mosquito or insect repellent because i was pregnant and I was getting eaten alive by the mosquitoes. And so I ended up creating my own insect repellent that I now sell through the animal body work and aromatherapy. And it's essential oils and all natural. There is a secret ingredient I put in that actually does adhere to the skin. Oh, that's uh, definitely or love. Or to the hair. Love yeah, and ears. <laughs> yeah. You rip it off and, and it hurts. <laughs> yeah. It, it, adheres to the, it adheres to the hair. And uh, so it lasts a little bit longer. But I found that like when the flies are mean, the, there's nothing that really does it so well as like a stronger chemical one. And mm -hmm. I hate to use it. But I tell you, I use my insect repellent for like ticks and mosquitoes. You'll never get one on you. It's great. But right. for serious fly season, I had, I went to go to get delight the other day and he came straight galloping over to me and I was like why are you jumping up and down like a lunatic again he's lazy <laughs> and he had four horse flies on a sheep oh he was so miserable oh my god I mean I felt so bad for him I hosed him off and I I just I sprayed the bejesus out of him with like the I get um a couple of different versions of like the all natural but uh from the big brands Right. Just to have on hand because they're a little stronger, more concentrated. And it was the only thing that helped him. But I felt so bad for him. He's not even outside for very long. <laughs> yeah. And we can't even like we have fly sheets, but it's been in the mid 90s here, which is hot for here. And when you add in humidity, I cannot put my horse out in a plastic mesh. Totally. Like it'll melt onto his skin. Like that's insanity. So I've been, yeah, I've been, I've switched from the like all natural la di da brand that I really like in a less traumatic season mm -hmm. and I'm using, you know, some Farnham product with mega permethrin in it, you know? <laughs> hey, you've got to do what you've got to do. So yeah. Here it's their legs. Like the little flies get on their legs. Um, and so if they have white socks, especially you can see the blood on their legs and it's just, Aww. Oh, like, oh, it's well, do you ever use like the shoe fly leggings or anything like that? Um, no, I, I mostly because of the heat. Uh, and also because I don't have, I haven't mowed. Uh, mm -hmm. and so I have some brambly sections that they like to, to forage in. 
and I don't want them to get their boots caught in like the brambles. <laughs> I don't know which no, that makes what, sense. what would win the brambles or the, or the boot. So probably the brambles because the boots can slide right off if, when there's enough pressure. Yeah. So the light has get... mastered how to stomp his foot and make it go flying. Oh yeah. The stomping, you know, I remember in Maryland where we had clay, the clay would get really hard if it didn't rain for a week or two. And then you would hear rumors, stories about horses actually fracturing from <gasps> stomping. Wow. It was a pretty common uh, story. So I don't know if it was completely made up or not. Well, I mean, I can, I can totally see that enough stomping. I mean, he's left full divots in the ground. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm talking six inches deep, like with the power of that power of his anger. <laughs> yeah. Cause some horses are really aggressive and they get pissed about it. Right. And oh, yeah. there's, he's, there's he's nothing they, they'll stop at. I mean, the pony, like he doesn't really complain, but he gets annoyed and like, he won't come near you, but <laughs> delight. He will throw a straight up temper tantrum. I've seen him. He had ground bees in the paddock at the beginning of the spring. And I saw him, of course, make the situation worse <laughs> by just running around buck farting and getting the ground bees more aggressive. Like they never stung him. He, <laughs> he kind of deserved it, but he was just so pissed that there were things run, you know, flying around his feet. So are ground bees, that's not like we had that whole yellow jacket conversation with, with Kathy Woods. Are they as scary as those? No, actually, they're actually not as bad. The problem is ground bees, they lay these underground nests and they can take up quite a big area and you don't necessarily see them pop up until like early summer. So you don't know that they're there until suddenly they're everywhere. Oh. But they don't really, they're not really aggressive and they don't really sting you. They're just, they take over the grass. So there's no grass. But it got to the point where I didn't want to go into the paddock. And so we had to spray for them. And uh, because they, they'll spread big time. <laughs> so it's more of an inconvenience for like the barn owners um, and their property than actual a threat to animal or humans. Mm. Something stung me in the field the other day. I have no idea what it was. Left a Big old welt stung me on the back of my neck. Oh, I know, I know. I was, I was, I was spreading manure, and I felt something. And I usually don't, I don't touch. In Florida, you I said this before. <laughs> you learn to keep your hands to yourself. Oh um, God! So, so I felt something on the back of my neck, and I think it <gasps> stung me like a pinch. Right? I think it did that before I reached back because it's not like me to reach back but I did and I felt something like crunch just a little bit between my mm. fingers and then it fell and then I was like oh that hurts oh my so I had to put my wheelbarrow away and shove past Ben who was hanging out by my little gate because he wanted more hay even though he has grass and I go into the house I have to take off my shoes because my shoes are filthy <laughs> And my husband's like, what's up? I was like, oh, something stung me. And I'm just going really slowly thinking my neck hurts, my neck hurts, my neck hurts. You know, it's just like, don't run, don't freak out. And I just ran and soaped it off. And then I, I rubbed it with witch hazel because I thought that was a thing, but I couldn't remember. <laughs> it's been so did long since I got stung by anything. <laughs> yeah. Did the witch hazel hurt or did it help it? Uh, it didn't hurt more. Actually, what ended up helping was I have this like camphor gel from Benadryl that's really mm -hmm. cold. And that kind of took the sting out or it, it made it more subtle until about like 24 hours later, it went away completely. And now I just have a bump. No idea oh, what wow. it was. It could have been anything. It could have been a small dinosaur. It's Florida. <laughs> a very small dinosaur. Can you imagine little microscopic dinosaurs? That's where they went. Yeah. Yeah. They, they really got smaller. <laughs> <laughs> I'm imagining this now. <laughs> tiny dinos. Welcome yeah. to my tiny world of terrors. That's <laughs> I, 
I love miniatures, so this is giving me a lot of pleasure. <laughs> so just think about this the next time you're scared of bugs and you go outside. It's just small dinosaurs. <laughs> <laughs> They're so cute. <laughs> well, I will say on the other side of things, the the uh, the windows, when I got here up at the, ca- the cabin, I opened all the windows and I slept alone the first night. And I don't know what drew them but when i woke up in the morning i had three huge luna moths on my windows to my bedroom and six other smaller moths there was like three three and three of different species just on my windows not in any other room and they hung out there all day and i felt like i felt like in some fantastical world that they were somehow drawn to me or something because you don't usually see them and it was just a weird cool thing and I said oh god does this mean that the insects are coming for me and I should like a episode like the hedgehog bird and I shouldn't go outside <laughs> <laughs> yeah no I think a luna moth the, the, because they're like a minty color they seem more soothing to me like they're more of a fairy type moth so they're coming to grant you a wish maybe or you know bring you good tidings or just say hey welcome to the woods Heather." I hope so, because they were cute, and I did talk to them all day. I was like, please be my friend. <laughs> <laughs> I I don't need to make enemies of the insects. No. We get the occasional, I see occasional luna moths in Florida. I saw something absolutely enormous on my kitchen window the other night. I have no idea what it was. It was <gasps> like five inches across. But because I was on the inside, whatever interesting pattern it had to identify it would have been out on the porch. And I was not I feel like out. every word out of your mouth is like Heather never moved to Florida. <laughs> like everything you say is like the anti like why wow. Yeah. Well I, to- I don't even tell I don't tell you the scary ones. Oh my god. Well <laughs> so real quick, I'll tell you about my honeymoon. We decided to go to Australia because my husband was never a big traveler. Uh-huh. And growing up. And so we go to Australia and we end up where we go through the rainforest and the Great Barrier Reef. And in the rainforest, I swear to God, the spiders were out after me. Mm -hmm. They were after me. No, and he kept pointing them out to me and be like, oh, "Oh, look, there's one right over your head. Oh, look, there's one here. Oh, look. And I mean, at one point he had gotten me so worked up that I actually asked the gentleman showing us to our room or it was like a little tree house to please remove the web and put it somewhere else. Yeah. This thing was huge. And then later on, my husband got some karma for making me so anxious <laughs> because he went running and he got, <laughs> he got attacked oh. by a flock of wild turkeys. <laughs> what? <laughs> so I feel like nature does actually look out for me in some ways because he made me so anxious and then I wake up and I'm drinking my tea on the porch and I look outside and he's running and there is literally 13 birds chasing him. Oh my God, that's hysterical. <laughs> I feel like he did. I mean, we almost got divorced before we got going. <laughs> he really, that is fantastic payback for pointing out spiders. Well, I mean, why would you do that to someone? The The best thing to do when you see something that scares the other person is to point them in a different direction diversion yeah i don't want to know if i know i mean and is it any wonder that now that i have nightmares about spiders and i sleepwalk when i do right i mean like i would i get up and run from them in my dreams i had a big trauma response when i started working on this house because this is a a manufactured home Mm -hmm. and the last time I lived, not the last time I lived in a manufactured home, but the last time I lived in one like in Ocala in the woods kind of area, it was full of spiders. And so I was convinced that this one would be full of spiders. Um, And it's not, I didn't realize that um, the ones that I had in the house before, like when I was like 18, they were there because it, it was full of roaches. So that was a whole other issue. Oh. <laughs> spiders were there to eat the roaches. They were there to help. So <laughs> yeah. So I blamed I blamed like the trees for being full of spiders. And I was like, we live under these trees. There's gonna be all these spiders. No, it's it was it was the roaches the whole time. 
It was a lesson uh, learned 20 years too late. <laughs> yeah, I always like to say, as, as afraid of spiders as I am, I respect their job protecting me from other insects. Yeah, I I had a, there's a few uh, on my back porch, like in a corner where they really aren't in the way. And I left them there because I said, hey, we have fewer, we have fewer bugs. This is for the best. But it, they're getting kind of out of hand because they're getting, mm, yeah. they're getting really big. And I'm like, I think maybe it's time for you guys to go to the great cobweb in the sky because I'm going to have other people around from time to time. And if they see me living with these huge spiders on my porch, they're going to be like, this girl is <laughs> it's out of her mind. Crazy. Like, let's get out of here. Like, I have to have some kind of, somebody come and feed for me sometimes. What are they going to say? If they think I'm like harboring giant spiders on my porch. Yeah, that's that. the level of crazy it that is. I don't ever want to know. I mean, I, I always tell people, we pulled up to the cabin and, and this, this teenager goes, it's like a little fairy house. I said, yes, I want to be the crazy old lady in the woods with the long silvery hair, just running around in the moonlight in her nightgown. Like, that's, that's what it. I want to be. Yeah. But I don't want to be the spider lady. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like I'm accidentally going down that path just because I don't like killing things. Like, I've reached a point in my life where I don't feel as comfortable just smacking things and killing them as I used to. But... There, I, there are some time, there are moments <laughs> where you have to go ahead and say, no, we live in a society. Enough is enough. This is a civilized <laughs> home. <laughs> you have plenty of woods to live in. My porch is not it. <laughs> yeah. I will not succumb to you. Yeah. Man, we talk about spiders right. every week. I mean, maybe I need to really see a therapist. <laughs> It's time it's to exercise also- these demons. <laughs> you should see a priest. <laughs> Not today, Satan. Well, I, I honestly, and maybe it's because we're been, we've been talking in summer. And so, like, I think you and I can agree to disagree that, you know, you like summer. I don't really like it. You like the heat. I don't really like it. But we both hate insects. Yeah, or, I think that's fair. Like, yeah. I mean, I don't hate them like I want to murder them all I just don't want to be around them after. right exactly I would prefer it if we could remain separate like a respectful distance mm-hmm. yeah like don't suck do my you. blood that's right don't sting my neck don't live on my porch yeah exactly like just boundary <laughs> yeah because the heat I mean we're all united and having to deal with the heat right like it's hot consistently here in Florida and it's hot in waves in the Northeast where you are and in the Midwest, I guess, to a certain extent, right? Like it goes. Oh, it gets hot out there. Yeah. Right. It gets crazy hot. And then maybe it cools off with a cold front. See, we don't get cold fronts in the summertime. They're not, they're not strong enough to, uh, to make their way into Florida. So our weather comes from the two sea breezes moving over the hot, peninsula right so we have a gulf coast sea breeze and atlantic coast sea breeze and every day there's like a little war to see which one is stronger and they push storms whichever one is stronger pushes the storms that they create in that direction so if the atlantic coast sea breeze wins then it rains more on the west coast that day and if the gulf coast sea breeze wins it rains more on the east coast that day it's like the greek titans are having some kind of war that we (laughs) It Mount is. Olympus is active. It is. The Florida is like Mount Olympus. And we are all down here eating ambrosia. And y'all are missing out because you're afraid of spiders. No. Um, With your tiny dinosaurs. <laughs> your tiny dinosaurs. It's actually a really cool, very unique weather system called um, Everybody Pencils Down. It is called a diurnal monsoon uh, weather pattern. Diurnal so, meaning daily. Correct. Very I, I, good. I studied. I did things. That's <laughs> really, I actually didn't learn the word diurnal until I was studying this weather pattern for my own edification. So, uh, well, so I yeah. like to use that word because I worked at the zoo for a while, and so we were talking about animals in terms of diurnal, nocturnal, etc. Isn't that funny that nocturnal is a common word? Yes, but diurnal isn't. Maybe diurnal it sounds isn't. too much like urinal. That's really what it is. (laughs) (laughs) 
Speaking of, not to digress really quick, but the other day I was in Walmart and I thought I was going in the women's room because I like looked at the picture on the sign and it was in fact not the women's room. (laughs) But I didn't know until I came out and saw a urinal after I was done. So, (sighs) did that sober. (laughs) Walmart is enough to, you know, it it sort of induces drunk like behavior in the best of our citizens. You just go Walmart in there. Be like an entire the episode. weird lighting <laughs> and bizarre <laughs> signage and general strangeness just makes you punch drunk the second you go in. Oh, and the different types of people. You could go there and people watch all day long. I know. It's just they're not the people I want to watch. No, I mean, I agree. And you probably get in trouble for watching them and might get beat up. But <laughs> it is definitely a, um, a colossal bummer. social experiment. <laughs> <laughs> Trash. Put it in bags. I gathered the recycling. So we we talk nonstop about bugs in summer, but um, the the real star of the summer season has got to be the heat, right? And I personally, I I love the heat. I love being warm. I used to go out and lay on my concrete driveway when I was a kid just to feel the heat soak into me. I don't know if that's weird. It's because you're cold blooded and have no emotion. <laughs> Don't don't break my lack of of heart into this. <laughs> Some of us hide our emotions because we care too much. You said that before on here too. Um, <laughs> and I well, and I like swimming. Swimming is good, right? But I only like swimming if it's crazy hot. Like I hate swimming if it's below like eighty five degrees. So, you know, there are advantages to the heat, but riding in the heat is a Again, a colossal bummer, much like going to Walmart. There's just, your horse hates it, you hate it, everyone hates it. And we have to layer on so much stuff to safely ride, right? Although one thing I have ditched in the heat is half chaps. Oh, yeah. You'll be very proud of me now. I'm only riding, I'm wearing very light tights with some mesh they're still they still have full seat silicone because safety okay. first but they have like mesh panels which will probably tear but they haven't yet uh so they're super lightweight and then i'm just wearing a pair of boot socks up to my knees and then my regular paddock boots and uh and that's How's really that been working helpful. no rubs or anything no rubs i'm not doing that much and that's my you know really my main focus of riding in the summer is to sort is more maintenance mode than anything Mm -hmm. even if it's really more about brain maintenance than muscle maintenance I just I just don't believe in working horses when it's you know 90 degrees with humidity I just don't believe it I I think it's Uh, a bad idea (laughs) I think it's a bad idea for me too like if I'm about to pass out my horse is probably worse Well, we're dealing with animals that are evolved for cold climates, right? Indisputable fact, horses do better in cold weather. Just look at the way they behave. Mm -hmm. You know, the first cold morning of the winter, I'm not getting on a horse. (laughs) Very happy. (laughs) I'm not eating that much dirt just because it's cold out. Um, Yeah, I love riding in the winter. Oh, I see. Because of that. I... As a as somebody who grew up riding thoroughbreds in Florida, and actually Arabs in Florida too, uh, I always preferred summer because it's like, oh, you're hot. <laughs> you're not running around <laughs> like an insane person, are you? <laughs> well, that's true, actually. My my trainer had said like, oh, if you're going to take him out on a trail, now would be the time to do it when it's right. too hot for him to act stupid. Yeah. And so there is a point to that. But like, if I'm in the arena, both horses are relatively pokey as it is so mm-hmm. having them forward is just a lovely thing and in the summer I don't want to work hard enough to sweat so I don't think that they should either yeah and I and I think that comes down to what your reasons are and and personal um motivations and and a whole slew of ethics but the, at the end of the day I am riding for pleasure I am not riding for championships or year end points or for a living and so if I'm not enjoying it, I better have a really compelling reason to do it. 
like so how would you how like what do you do to avoid the heat of the day or like what are your what would you do to kind of keep calm and happy as much as you can while you're riding this summer because I know you've been riding a lot I have been yeah well so I you know one thing that I do is I only I don't even attempt to ride between 8 a.m and say 6 p.m does that entire stretch of the day where the sun is at you know any sort of angle is just that you know that they, they can shine through the trees and get me. That's not acceptable. It's not happening. I go out if I go out early enough in the morning and it's it's rained the day before and so the temperature has abated somewhat, I might ride in the morning, although it can be if it's like 80 or 90% humidity, I won't because that's not any good either. Even if it's like 75 degrees, if it's like 80% humidity, you, you can barely see through the sweat to get the saddle girthed up. Oh, so it's I like just, breathing in muck. Like right. It's, it's so hard to breathe. It's Yeah. There, there's just, for me, it's like the cloyiness on the skin. And I know, I know that my horse can't uh, evaporate that sweat off either. So I just say, okay, the morning is out. And then I watch, I watch uh, the weather in the evening. Because a lot of times, if it is, if it's, it's hot between like, four and 6 p.m. in the summertime, that can be the hottest part of the day if the sun's been out all day. A lot of people think it's like one o'clock, but it's all about the heat of the day and how it sits around and grabs on the ground. But once you get towards like six, and this sort of depends on your time zone, it should start cooling off somewhat. And a lot of times the humidity has dropped off and it'll keep dropping off until sunset. And that's an opportunity. I think watching humidity levels as much as the heat is one way that I manage to ride without stressing myself or my horse. It's very specific, um, but I'm very weather minded. So, no, I think that's very helpful. That's how I do things. Yeah. Because because, a lot of people don't take the humidity into account, and it's probably the most important factor. Yeah. And it really depends, you know, where you live, your humidity might be lower, but then you also have to understand that's what you and your horse are acclimated to. So, like when I live in New York, and they would say, it's going to be muggy tomorrow, the humidity is going to be 50%. And I would roll over laughing. That (laughs) laughter did not apply to the horse I had to ride the next day in Central Park. He thought it was muggy because. He was used to 30 or 40% humidity. So uh, it really, I think in everything in life, if you want to do it in a like technical manner, establishing a baseline is a really, really good idea. And sort of figuring out what your baseline is for moisture in the air is not a bad idea, especially in the summertime. And it can be helpful in the winter too, because like dryness and static and stuff like that. But yeah, I, I try not to do any work if the humidity is like above 70%. That makes sense. And I imagine too that like your your diurnal storms that come through, your monsoons, that tend to maybe reduce the humidity a little bit in the afternoon because they're getting it out of the air. If you can get in ahead of them, like if you can, like I, I've started doing this when I was a kid where I would watch the sky and if you could see that this because the storms will like line up and if you could sort of see them coming you say okay i'm gonna tack up and i'm gonna ride for 20 minutes before the storm comes because they blow cool air ahead of them nice and that could be your best shot of the entire day if you're looking for low temps right ahead of a thunderstorm that's you know when they make that scary sort of ufo look in the front yes so that's cold air rushing out of the storm is what causes that it's actually the storm deteriorating or beginning to deteriorate the the cold cloud top is collapsing and that blows out ahead of it if you're sitting around and all of a sudden it gets really windy and you're like what's going on and then 20 minutes later it storms you go i had no idea it was good to storm surprise you were warned (laughs) Yeah, the wind told you, my friend. It happens all the time in Florida. Like, it'll get super windy, even though it's like clear. And people are like, I don't know what's going on. And they just go about their day. Like, and then they go half an hour later, where did that storm come from? It's like, that was what we call an outflow boundary from a a collapsing storm. And it created a new storm right over your head. Surprise. (laughs) (laughs) You know, it's funny how, like, I don't know, nature tells us things if we only listen. 
Isn't that something? I mean, people so used to live without um, radar. We to, yeah, we used to be tied to the land. Imagine farmers having to pay attention <laughs> to the weather that day. You know, you'd wake up and you'd almost be able to taste it in the air, right? Right. And well, and the clouds the night before can tell you something about if the weather's going to change the next day. Like it's, it's, it's really not hard to learn. You just have to make a focused effort to like observe and take notes. And it's super interesting. And yeah. You know, there. I've never been very much as into meteorology or anything like that. Um, but is that what it's called? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm like, wait, that doesn't sound right. Um, but it's been cool because I noticed the big difference between when I live on the coast and then when I'm up in the mountains because mm-hmm. the mountains hold the clouds for longer. So even if it says it's going to rain for two hours, expect it to rain for five because it doesn't necessarily let the clouds move on. Right. And so it tends to stick, which is why everything's so green here. Um, and then you go to the coast and things tend to move very fast on the coast because of all the wind. Yeah. And in the on the on the coast you're being affected by um on the northeast specifically you're being affected by fronts right like fronts are pushing us uh, the the ingredients for storms in your direction and then pushing them right out of the neighborhood mountains are creating their own weather so that's a significant change too well and that makes me feel even smaller when i'm in the mountains because i always felt like the mountains were so humbling too they really they create are their own weather is kind of Mind blowing. <laughs> <laughs> like, don't eat me, mountain. That wouldn't be your friend. It's all just about air moving in different directions, up, down, side to side. And as it heats, it cools. And as it cools, it heats. And you know what I mean? <laughs> it's all well, just, it's just air. Like, wasn't that in um the crown when it was yelling about airplane turbulence? Prince Philip was oh. a, and they're like, it's just air. And I thought about that. Like, that's really, yeah. <laughs> thing though that's deep but also the up down side to side it brought to visual uh, of me trying to ride ferris <laughs> in the summer when he's wiggly and he hates the bugs oh i have to ride him in if i'm going to ride him i have to ride him in shoe fly boots a fly mask and then i have to spray him down big time and then with fly spray and every five steps he stops to itch himself oh and so I'm constantly like trying to get him forward to move him away from the bugs, right? So he creates his own little wind mass. Yeah. And uh, and then he like he'll dead stop from a canter and go and like rub his back leg with me in the saddle oh, with his God. nose. I'm like this is how we die. Why are we in a C shape? I, uh, I mean, <laughs> he like he's so particular about it, and I just. I don't know. I, I mean, for me, I have to kind of, he's a big baby when it comes to the sun and I try to keep him in when it's the heat of the day, mm-hmm. but I like him to be outside as much as possible. So he is also gets used to it and he gets some breeze. I, I feel like the breeze is the biggest thing and shade. Yeah, it really, it makes a huge difference. And, um, I got, you know, I, I rode early yesterday morning and it was pretty humid yesterday and, standing still it was like oh my god i'm going to melt and then as soon as ben would start walking just walking oh now we're making a breeze the, there was coolness to the air but you couldn't feel it because the air wasn't moving it was stagnant yeah i think that's a tough thing i the where my barn is it's really cute because it's situated kind of nestled in the woods and if you ride in the morning, which is the best time to ride because it's shaded the arena until about 10 or 11. So you can get away with riding in because you have shade. And a lot of times with all the trees, you have a nice amount of oxygen there. Yeah. But the, uh, the afternoon is brutal. It could be 70 degrees, but the sun's shining on you and it feels like 90. Oh yeah. My old my old barn was like that before I rode before I moved up here where you had to ride like in a field. And, uh, you know, if you got there after work, five or six o'clock, it was it didn't even matter if it was wintertime. Like the sun just felt so horrible on your skin. Yeah. So. Yeah, I actually find riding in the evening to be much harder because I feel like where I live, 
the ground holds the heat from the yeah. day and it doesn't dissipate very well. Yeah. Yeah. You really, that, you know, you just have to know your own patterns, what it's like, because I completely agree. Like if it hasn't, if it doesn't rain all day or cloud over at all and it just stays sunny, the evening is unbearable and it's not even going to cool off overnight. But I have a better shot at riding in the morning in that case than I have in the evening. Because if it's 90 degrees at 6 p.m., the mm -hmm. sun angle like it is, just glaring in your face, no, forget it. No. I used to get so dizzy because I found that I was dehydrated in the summer. So I would get migraines. I would get dizzy. And then I realized it was because I wasn't having the electrolytes or the water enough the night before. Oh, wow. And yeah, I, I would get physically sick. And even now my body naturally rejects heat. Like the second humidity level rises, so does my hair and so does the amount of bloating <laughs> in my waistband. Uh, <laughs> so I have a physical reaction to summer. But, um, but yeah, I think hydration for me and my horses is the most important thing for the heat. And I actually give electrolytes in the summer for both my horses. And I give Ferris, this is a little controversial, but who says if we don't love controversial things, <laughs> I give Ferris the sugar-free Gatorade and yeah. I give him a, a can of Guinness every day. And Does he gets he that in summer. Do you um do you put it in his feed or you just give him the liquid? Um, well, either actually. Yeah, it doesn't really matter. He he's been drinking it for about four years now, and when I first started giving it to him, he doesn't love the smell. He was very suspicious, so I gave a little bit in his feed and I mixed it in. But now he mostly just gets it in a bowl or the feed bowl, and he just slurps it right up. In mm. fact, I mean, I don't know. I don't. I think I told you this. I posted a little video about it on my Instagram reels and just with a pic, like a video of my dad just feeding him a beer and I was telling why and it went viral. Did it really? I saw that video. It went viral. Yeah. I posted it in the clubhouse. I have over 60,000 views and like a hundred comments. Oh my God. That's so bizarre. It's so funny because it's all these people saying, oh yes, beer really does work for sweaters, for non-sweaters and it really helps them. And it actually does help them absorb water more easily, apparently. And then you have all these other people who are like, you're disgusting. Why are you giving beer to your horses? You're sheer monster. And so yeah. I really enjoy both sides. <laughs> <laughs> That's wonderful. I am, um, you know, I bought, I bought beer for Manny, who is the mini, mm -hmm. the senior mini that I have as a companion for Ben. Because he, he doesn't sweat at all. For, like, oh, no. Nothing. But my yeah. entire property is shady all day. That's so I, I don't worry about him too much. But I bought some Guinness like to see and he he won't drink it. But he's getting more grain now. So actually, I think this evening I'm going to try some in his grain and see if I can get him to eat it. Um, yeah, just put a little bit in. So mm -hmm. they kind of because it's a little bitter tasting for them. And, you know, horses love sweet things. Right. But it's at the point now where Ferris is normally very polite. But the second he sees the bowl come out, he starts <gasps> crying. He starts asking. <laughs> oh, it's it's ridiculous. and. We make this running joke that um, is what's good for my horse is good for me, right? Right. So I have a little Yeti cooler next to my tack box. And with his feed, he gets a beer. And then if I'm a good girl, I sit down and have a beer with him. So nice. It's a bonding moment. Delight mm -hmm. <laughs> has zero interest in it. And he doesn't need it because he sweats like a pig or a thoroughbred. Yeah. Ben, ben drank what Manny wouldn't. And Ben's <laughs> always sweaty. He's sweaty right now. So yeah. I'm not worried about him. He's a big chunky boy, but he sweats. So, but you know, whatever it's good for him. We all know Guinness, like what they used to say, it raises the iron. It's what the, I don't know if that's true or not, but that used to be what doctors would say. Say, so, oh, Guinness is good for the anemic. Yeah. And I think for, for Ferris, it's the adrenal system. And there's something about the fermentation that helps him to absorb and actually metabolize better. Cause mm -hmm. I think it, I, I don't understand the science. I do know that I don't want to risk not doing it. Right. And it, it, he he really doesn't sweat like nearly at all, which makes me so nervous. Um, some summers are better than others, but the summer started really early when he still had a winter coat. So I was in like a panic. Mm. But, um, you know, a little bit of sweat is, is a triumph in my book. And I will continue to throw everything I can his way. So 
I just think for me, electrolytes and staying hydrated is one of the more important things. Yeah, it's for um, human too. Yeah. And you know, I've noticed that my horses drink more overnight than they drink during the day. And I, I don't know why, why that maybe is because it's cooler. Maybe. Yeah, maybe they're like ew, the water is warm. I don't know. I mean, I don't like drinking warm water either. Yeah. I need a spring oh. with 72 degree water bubbling up. Oh, instead I of know. instead of a trough. <laughs> I have, well, that's the benefit of where I have in the mountains. So apparently Poland Spring used to have a spring nearby uh -huh. and they don't anymore, but we have a spring on our property. And so our house gets the spring water. We don't need a filter. And so I plan on putting in automatic waters for the horses that come straight from the mountain spring. Oh yeah. That's what, actually, that's what all of the water is up around here. This is like bottled water territory. Where it's I awesome. Because of the limestone. Yeah. So there's actually, there's a, there's a, there is a circular pit in the woods on my property, which we think was like an early 20th century bottled water uh, operation. No way. <laughs> yeah. Like near my house. Uh, hopefully, I hope I then pit never opens up and the gaping mod doesn't consume you. That is a podcast for another day. <laughs> and it is surrounded by woods right now. We can't get to it, but there is okay, a gaping maw. <laughs> it's already there. You have like an entrance to like a dark, dark realm on your property. It's, I do. <laughs> and I, that's why the spiders are there. And I didn't find it until well after I had bought the property. <laughs> and it's so, not that big a place. Oh my God. I'm yeah, like so nervous we're like, for you right now. Do what you is you need that? You like start throw salt around the outside of your property <laughs> and start smudging, light candles, pray to all the gods. I don't care who. <laughs> There's no like cloud of bats going in and out of it in the evening and the morning. So that's a good sign. I almost never smell brimstone. Oh, that's uh, good. And the horses <laughs> don't have red eyes. So I think you might be okay temporarily. <laughs> if they have red eyes, just, just run. I saw, I did see something over there like in that no. corner of the property that I don't know what it was. That's no. Fact. Yeah. I don't have any idea. I saw a thing. I was like, Oh my God, what is that thing? And my husband turned and he said, what thing? And I said, Oh my God, it's gone. And then I don't know what it was. I have, I have absolutely no idea what it was. Oh my God. Bro. It was like something between a dog and a bear and it wasn't a pig. So you maybe it was a, a demon. I don't know. You saw a cryptid or like a dark fae. Yeah. What's a cryptid? That's a that's cryptid a horse whose ball hasn't dropped. <laughs> yeah, but it also refers to like a fae or some other such, you know, mythological folklore creature that does not change shapes. So it can only be that shape. It would be like Bigfoot or the Chupacabra, that kind of thing. Oh, yeah. No, I think probably it was one of those. No, I'm pretty sure you have a Chupacabra on your property. It sounds like a Chupacabra. It's not the Swamp Cabbage Man, which is Florida's Bigfoot. Oh, we have the blue that we have the, the pine the pine devil. Oh yeah, we have heard the New that. Jersey devil. Yeah, and the pine <laughs> baron. It's so funny how every state has their own like mythological creature. Yeah, but we insist on calling them mythological. Well, only for our sanity, so we can sleep at night. Because <laughs> you can't tell me that there's not some truth hmm. to some of these, to these stories. They're they started for a reason. Oh, totally. Yeah. Well, now that I'm sufficiently scared, um, <laughs> we're going to have to do some research about maybe different states and their stuff for like a Halloween episode and really freak each other out. <laughs> Ghostly creatures. <laughs> God, you're so much better at that than I am. 
<laughs> it's the Satan on my property. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I feel like, honestly, I've been walking around that the, my quote of the week has been, not today, Satan. And I don't know why, because I don't even necessarily believe in Satan. However, that being said, it seems really funny and everyone starts laughing. So I just keep doing it over and over. <laughs> Use it until they get tired of it. <laughs> yeah, and then I'll have to have something else next week. And, but uh, I figure they're teenagers, so they're going to tell me whether that happens, but... Oh, you know, it's, t- it's sad because they're teenagers. They've probably never heard that before. Well, yeah, well, that's why they think it's funny for a couple days. <laughs> <laughs> you have to look up more slang from the 80s <laughs> to impress your teens. <laughs> yeah, and then they're going to be like, oh, we just made up this cool saying, and it's new, and then it's going to come back, and I'm going to laugh, and I'll be like, I know where we got that from. It was me. <laughs> Get the yeah. nice thing like land sakes. For land oh, sakes. Or, oh, my Lanta. <laughs> <laughs> I, have had, I have had teenagers laugh at me hysterically for saying horse feathers, which I got really? from my grandmother. Yeah, yeah, because I guess it's a regionalism and it's probably died out in a lot of places. So, <laughs> huh. yeah. Yeah, I guess it really depends, right? The different sayings. I can't think of another one off the top of my head because I came up with Oh, my Lanta. But... Um, so my brain is now fried. It's, it's shut down <laughs> for further thought. But I they, that would be a fun, actually. I would want to know what people in the clubhouse yeah. have that are like sayings that they use that people kind of side-eye them for. Yeah, it's all team win of the week. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Dude, I'm totally going to keep that in the edit because that was really funny. <laughs> it's all team win of the week. Uh, okay. You just keep this whole segment in. Here, everybody, this is what we do. My cat bit this me. Is, I know. I really have to do like a blooper episode. I think it would be so funny. <laughs> All right. So adulting win of the week. Do you want to go first? Because you had to think about that one. So I did. Well, you know, the fact of the matter is I had a lot of wins this week, other. Oh, bragging. I love no, it. it didn't feel like it. Honestly, like I tweeted yesterday, my entire year has been in retrograde and I meant it. Oh. It has just been, oh man, it's been a hell of a year. Not what I expected. And, uh, I get, you know, so tiny wins. And so <laughs> here's what happened yesterday. I uh, I chose I I don't have curbside uh, uh, garbage pickup right now because I have chosen cheapness, mm-hmm. and I so I gathered the trash, put it in bags. I gathered the recycling, I put it all in the truck. I got myself together, put on outside world clothes, went out to the truck, paused for a minute, opened up the county website. Saw oh, that no. the transfer stations are in fact closed on Wednesdays, and did everything in reverse. <laughs> Had to bring garbage out of the truck. Like, please, Lord, like, let me not have raccoons. So far, I do not have raccoons because I do have two garbage bags on my porch, which is just very sad. Uh, I have and- a question though. Why didn't you leave the bags in the bed of the pickup? Um, so they wouldn't be in the sun. Okay. And so if we got like three inches of rain, because the past two times I've gotten rain, I've gotten four inches of rain at one time, Ooh. and I've gotten two inches of rain at one time. And both of those things flood the bed of my pickup, and I didn't want garbage in it. So I just put everything on the back porch. That makes sense. Yeah. And uh, so I walked into the house, and I was like, oh, my God, I can't believe I just spent half an hour gathering the trash, loading the truck getting ready to leave locking the door saying goodbye to the cat and then finding that they are closed and as a friend pointed out when i tweeted my misery at least you checked and you didn't drive to the transfer station with the garbage oh my god i was 100 percent gonna say the same thing like at least you got dressed and you got out of the house and then you checked before you go all the way there yeah i check and 
bonus, I realized that I had a wet load of clothes in the washing machine. And so I was able to put those in the dryer and didn't have to run the washing machine a second time. <laughs> I love it. And in the, you know, in sometimes you just take whatever win you can find. And those were very housewifely wins, which is not like me at all. But, but you know, wins don't have to be big. <laughs> yeah. And for you, that is big. It is big because those are not my things. Those are my husband's things. And he took my son to orientation at his college and it was just me. And there is so much to do when it's just you. There yeah. is so much to do. You have to do like, I'm used to, I do the horses and I work on my books and I might help with dinner. Right. And sometimes I make lunch, but when it's just me, the horses, Lord knows the cat needs constant attention. Yeah, the cat seems kind of needy, huh? The cat is breaking my brain. Um, you know, I've got to wash all the dishes when I make something to eat. I've got to do my own laundry. And you can't let laundry sit this time of year, let me tell you. Yeah, it just gets moldy. Yeah. And I've had to water the plants because it hasn't rained. So there's just been like hours of extra work. Thank goodness I didn't spend two hours driving to High Springs, derping around in town. And taking the garbage <laughs> to the closed transfer station. Thank goodness. <laughs> yeah, I would have been annoyed. We we are the same up here. In, in you know, we live in the mountains up here, and there's no garbage pickup. You can drop it off on Wednesdays and Saturdays. Mm -hmm. And if you don't drop it off on Wednesdays and Saturdays, and you hold on to it in your <laughs> tent because the bears yeah. come, so oh you, can't, you can't have it outside. The bears come. The bears come. You know. Guess what I, I did. Think I about bears. <laughs> did bears okay. come? Um, no, because I actually just put it in the shed. So it's yeah. under lock and key, so we're not worried about it too much, which is good because I don't I love bears, but I don't want to be that close to one you know, yet. I didn't even I'm think about bears ready. when I left my stuff on the porch. There could be bears. There could be bears. Yeah, absolutely. Crap. So I mean it is <laughs> Well, and I will say, so I'm actually super excited on multiple reasons for my adulting win for this week. So for anybody who knows me, I absolutely hate to horse show. Like I hate it. Mm -hmm. I love to be behind the scenes. I love to photograph them. I love to walk around and groom, but I do not want to be. I, this week, have been to my first ever show as like a groom and personal photographer, like personal Ooh. massage therapist. So I got to come and actually see be behind the scenes. There's some big riders here, but I'm here with my friends and I'm trying out my new camera and I'm so having fun with it. Ooh, camera. Yes. So I got a new Nikon. It's a mirrorless and I've been playing with the speed and the settings and it is so fast and it's so light and I have it automatically set. So all the photos get automatically transferred Social media size to my phone. What? You don't just so, get it. You don't have to yeah. sit there and do that whole, what's that transfer app? And it takes forever. Yep. Oh my exactly. God. Exactly. So I have, I have on the SD card, I have the raw images and then I have it set up. It, technology is wonderful because now on my phone, I open it up and it's a JPEG and it's social media size. And so I can just make an album for my friends and say, here are your photos. And I don't have to spend three hours downloading them and editing them. Oh, see, so I I when you said that so I was getting like, I, cause I've been like, I should really take out my Nikon and charge it and take, and take pictures of like birds and clouds and stuff. And now I'm like, that. you now I'm like, Oh, but it's such a pain to <laughs> upload the photos. <laughs> I know because you have to like take the SD card out and then uh, put it into an adapter. But you get the Bluetooth to connect to your phone and it like yeah. won't and it's a whole thing. I'm going to do it anyway. You've inspired These me. New fangled technology. I'm telling you, it's a, uh, it's, it's a game changer. I wonder like, if I should I've, just do a tin type. So have you seen those people that do tin type photography? It's cool. Oh no, that is cool though. Yeah. They like, I don't know anything. No, I don't, I don't know how it works, but you like, I watched somebody on Instagram. She like dropped this I, piece of metal with a negative image on it into a chemical and like brushed it and the photo just came out. On wow, that's metal. cool. It was badass. 
I did take a photography class when I was in high school and, um, you know, I've done some like amateur photography stuff, mm -hmm. but it wasn't until I started writing articles for magazines and they were like, Oh, do you have a photo to go with this? That I really started taking photos, but I always feel like such a fraud, even though the pictures I take have ended up in magazines and on websites and stuff. I still feel like I'm not really a photographer. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I feel, no, I'm a writer. I don't feel like it. But it's, I have a lot of fun taking the pictures. Let's, and let's go ahead and call you author photographer, Heather Wallace. I don't know. I, 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 if you're going to ask me what my ISO is, I just, I'm going to be like, it's good enough for the lighting I have. Thank you. And I'm just going to say. <laughs> well, the, I mean, how much, do you, how many technical grammar terms do you know? Do you know what a predicate is anymore? A predicate? Predicate. Predicate. Yeah, I remember oh, the word predicate. Like, as if. <laughs> Most of the time, I couldn't tell you what a noun was. Like, I literally can't remember the definitions of different words. <laughs> so, <you know. laughs> That's true. And it's funny, too, because a lot of times, even with the bodywork stuff, um, I try to, I don't want to say dumb it down, but I try to, in layperson's terms, mention where the muscles are, whatever. So sometimes I have a brain fart and forget the actual name of the muscle. Sure. Because <laughs> I just don't say it enough aloud. You're like, this is the stretchy strip. That's what I tell all my clients. <laughs> I, I told somebody today, I said, I said yeah, it, the muscle feels really ropey. And they were like, I'm, what? And I said, come feel it. And they're like, oh. I said, yeah, there's a term for that, but we're going to go ahead and say ropey so you remember what it is. <laughs> <laughs> That's oh, really great. I have another win, Natalie. Oh. I did butt stuff today on a horse. <laughs> oh, you did? Getting back to our second episode. That yeah. stuff is your great, what was it? It was it's a big accomplishment. Yeah, greatest achievement. It really is. I, I one, of the, one of the show horses came out and he walked up the little hill to be mounted and he did like a hamstring stretch. And I said, oh, 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 why is he stretching that out? What's tight? And I did, and I checked and he was super tight in the hamstring. And the fun part was I started laughing and going, I'm going to tell Natalie I did butt stuff today. And there was like 17 other show people walking up with their horses over her because <laughs> I don't have an inside voice. No. <laughs> so all the girls I was with, all the teenagers were like, oh, Heather! <gasps> and I was like, ew, don't be gross. Okay? Like, I mean, under his tail, girls. Like, you know. But, so I've had quite a few wins this week. I'm actually pretty happy. You're pretty <laughs> accomplished for this today. Like, for the time <laughs> of day. Yeah, I'm still in my pajamas. I mean, I hurt my back, so that's why. But still, I'm still in my pajamas. <laughs> oh, but you know what? In some ways, I wish I wish I could do that. So that would be a win for me. Oh, so I'd be able to flex and be like, I've got to wear my pajamas all day. Your day yeah. is coming. Your kids will be 18 someday. Oh no, I'm going to do it this weekend. No, oh. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm making a plan, and I'm going to execute said plan, and I will show up. So in the summer, I wear shorts um, to bed because it gets hot in the house or whatever. Right. And so I just plan on taking those shorts and wearing them because Delight Saddle, I have a full, full sheepskin cover over it. Oh, my over goodness. Over the fenders, everything. So I can ride in shorts. That's decadent. I mean, I am nothing if not high maintenance when it comes <laughs> to my comfort level. And someone asked me, they said, but doesn't the sheepskin make it hotter? I said, oh, no, my darling. It's moisture wicking. It draws moisture away from you. And she goes, really? And I said, yes, you need one. And I have everybody, in the winter, it keeps my butt warm. And in the summer, it, it I can ride in shorts. I can't ride in shorts. I'll get eaten by bugs. Yes, We're back. But, We've come full circle. But you, yeah, I mean, say hello to your tiny dinosaurs. I'm coming in February and <laughs> never sooner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's probably wise hey i just got a lightning alert my luck could be changing <laughs> oh there you go get ready to ride here's open uh, yeah <laughs> yeah